I'm here at the research symposium with a wonderful group of students here talking about Netflix with a deep analysis in that. So tell me a little bit about your project, Matt. Yeah, so we kind of started with the Netflix analysis, looking at how they had their growth over kind of the international stage. We know Netflix is being the first company and kind of the first streaming service and that's been an industry that's really exploded over the past five years. So we wanted to try and take a look back using that to be able to kind of create projections to move forward. So the first thing that we really looked at was going to be blocking out the revenue growth by subscribers and the amount of revenue that was generated by countries. So we found that the vast majority of the revenue and subscribers that we found were going to be in the US and Canada. We kind of identified that as zone one to get an idea of how the growth really developed there. And then we were able to take a look at their growth since they became public back in 2001, when they were actually not even a streaming service yet. So we were able to track that whole progress, looking at it through here, where the growth as a streaming service really started around 2013. And we were able to see that there was a huge growth in the stock value through NASDAQ to get an idea of how much the industry really developed. We kind of used Netflix as a template to understand that. But then we kind of started to look more at the content debate and content competition that's developed with the new streaming services. So we wanted to start to take a look at what Netflix has been doing with their own content moderation and where they're producing the most content. So we kind of jumped down here where we've been tracking the amount of original releases that they had planned over each quarter, over a period of about four years or so. And one of the things that we noticed is that in comparison to the main competitors that we think of on like the US stage, like Amazon Prime, HBO Max, and Disney Plus, Netflix has always done more with the production of them. So they've always been like one of the top companies in terms of how much content they produce. But one thing that we started to notice is that this is actually becoming a little bit of a hindrance to them because especially with the news that's come out within the last week or so with the quarterly report, if we were to take the information that we got last week, we would have the value be about here. So it's a huge drop in such a short time. And we were kind of able to conclude that partially it was because of how much content they're producing here. This is a lot that they have to budget and allocate out. And for every 100 that they actually produce, maybe five or 10 actually are able to become big and grow in revenue. So we noticed that that became a bit of a damage hindrance to them, but. Yeah. Really interesting. That's awesome, Matt. Um, I'm curious why this project, you guys, Matt or team, is there anyone who wants to talk about why you chose to do this deep dive into the net Netflix analysis? Yeah, I can take this one. So we tried to, this was like a self-led uh, semester long project. So we all kind of tried to pick something that was interesting and yet would provide enough data for us to really do like an in-depth report. And originally we had thought about doing Netflix and every other like subscription service, but Netflix they had the most data, but it was good to look a little bit at all of the different ones. Um, but ultimately we focused on Netflix because it was the oldest, the best, well, maybe not the best now, but it was the best at the time when we started it. So we thought it would produce the most data. Sure, that makes sense. I was just gonna add that the other side of it that we kind of looked at was the past few years with how COVID has really impacted what sort of companies really can thrive and succeed. And with Netflix and the streaming service being a predominantly online platform, they were one of the markets that was able to weather and grow with COVID. So that was where we kind of started our search. And that was really what helped us frame our mindset for going into this. Sure. So bringing it here today to the research symposium, why is it important for you to get out here and talk to your classmates in the Fairfield community about this project? And so far, how has the day been going for you guys? So for the first part, I think it's important to really talk about because it gives everybody a perspective on the whole sides of the company with streaming services like with Netflix, you often just think of like the final product with the content and with the idea of being able to give a whole picture about what their 
process was when we kind of broke that down and then kind of being able to create our own process with what we were able to find in research. We find it really important to make sure that we as students can ask the questions of like, okay, how did we reach this point with the company? Why are things the way they are? And I think the research symposium offers a real great opportunity for that. And so far, it's been great because we've had a lot of opportunities to talk both with peers and faculty that have even had more experiences with um, different researchers that have looked at Netflix before with us. So we've been able to even take a deeper dive and understand the larger picture that this could go into. Wonderful. And, yeah, That's wonderful. You guys are so impressive. Congratulations on all your hard work and thanks so much for chatting with us. Thanks very much. Thank